You guys, you know, we are all about separating myth from reality in this show. We're all about giving the degree of separation between the crap and what everybody really needs to be able to digest every day. And we're going to find you better ways to do it on a daily basis because we have a treat right around the corner. You are a Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I will be your host on this magical ride we take today. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. You can find me at Twitter all day, O State, available on all of your podcasting platforms, as well as YouTube. Today, we got a special guest. Why? Because what do we constantly talk about? As a fan base, how you can drown out the bull crap by having the right sources at the right times to get you the right information. And you don't have to pay for it all the time. You don't have to suffer for it either. So everybody, help me welcome in Mr. Jason Watkins. How are you doing, brother man? I'm doing good, Cody. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yeah, man, let's, let's just go ahead and jump in. Why do you think... Right, because uh, from an OSU fan growing up, our entire my entire life, every day, every media outlet growing up was all about OU, OU, OU. Now we can talk about why, which that actually is one of the cool things I think about OU is why uh-huh. OU is called the Sooner State and all that stuff. The history ba- dating back to 1890 that OU had and how invested right. y'all were in coaching. You know, we didn't we didn't get in the game for a long time. That's where we screwed the pooch, but. Today, you know, you just hear so much negativity all the time from all of the media outlets that you've been listening to for 30, 40 years. And why does it never grow? Why is it always the same spiel every single year? And there's the haves and the have nots and the favorites. And it'll always be that way, regardless of success. Why do you think it's become almost, I guess you could say, lazy to some degree in media? Well, well, I think we were talking about this a little bit before, but I, I feel like a lot of it is the fact that negativity kind of sells. Um, you know, when you when you look at ESPN or in, in Fox Sports, I mean, you know, what are their what are their best shows that do the highest ratings? You got Stephen A. Smith and 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 their whole deal that they do, and then on the other one, it's Sk- it's Skip and Shannon, and 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 even to some extent, especially you know, for from the Oklahoma fan standpoint, Colin Cowherd just loves to bash on OU. You know, he it in and because he knows that it gets a lot of response from OU fans, which you know picks up his his trends. You know, um, but it, it I think that that really is what it, a lot of it boils down to. But what they really don't understand is that it, it creeps into the fan base, and it ends up kind of poisoning the well, if you if you will. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. 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 One hundred percent. And you know, for for for. Me specifically as an Oklahoma State fan, right? When you got people yeah. like a Jim Traber, right? And right. and even uh, Pat Jones. Pat Jones doesn't get on the airways and talk glowingly of O State. I just, <laughs> it, right? To me, as an issue fan growing up, that was the most frustrating thing. I understand right. that because of the dominance OU you had uh, from 1890 all the way to our very first win in 1917, like there right. is a reason it's a Sooner State. And I get all that and I respect right. it. And I think as a fan base, if you don't know the, the history, then you can't respect what's happening at all, in my opinion, sure. right? Sure. But oh, that's the thing is there's a lot of these, these individuals that get paid money that you have to pay money to listen to or read that they're just they're people that, that write the same stuff every single year. They reword it. They rebash people here and there, and they spit it out. And like you said – That's what people think they have to listen to. So that's the narratives they go with. And then when you have somebody like, like, like when we study film all the time, and then you have people talking about, for instance, when I hear people, they're like, um, you know, Jaden Nixon's a terrible running back. He's not going to make it. You're like, wait, what? (laughs) There is not a single time throughout the entire year. The dude was pushed backwards. 
Right. Okay, right. so why do know. fans say this crazy type? And it's same with OU. Well, it's y'all just like had, it's just like the the Dylan Gabriel talk, you know. Well, y'all just had a historic recruiting class, and I'm yeah. still hearing some huffing, puffing, blow the flipping house down crap. What's <laughs> I do, what, what, what is happening? Uh, you know, well, it all boiled down to two players that they didn't get. So, yes. Oklahoma has picked up what is now the number five class in the country. Um, you know, they had transfer portal ranking of about 12, which I know that, you know, that kind of was one of them deals where they started off at number one, but they got so they did so well in the actual, you know, it's headlined by three, five stars. You have Jackson Arnold uh, quarterback from Denton Geyer. Um, he is the fourth ranked quarterback in the country. He won the elite 11. Um, Peyton Bowen, who was his teammate, safety. Uh, now, that was the biggest thing was on signing day itself, he did not choose Oklahoma, even though it looked like he was going to for a long time. He right. was uh, he was scheduled to go to Notre Dame. I think that's who his parents wanted him to go to. In right, fact, okay, that's pretty okay, obvious okay. that that's where he, they wanted him to go. But he's been wanting to go to Oklahoma. Well, obviously, the other five-star being P.J. Adebawari, the defensive end, uh, edge rusher. You know, unbelievable play. I mean, the, the, and it get, you could go down the list. I mean, if you want to take a look at it, you can go down the list. These guys are studs, one after the other after the other. Yeah. They had seven guys in the top 100, um, you know, and a, the better part of the entire class is in the top 247. So, <laughs> you know, the composite, this is, a, this is a great class before Peyton Bowen even signed. Now, right. what happened was he went with Oregon out of the blue. He had turned down to, uh, a chance to go visit. So everybody freaks out. And that includes the fan base. They're freaking out over it too. And just like the Notre Dame fan base was freaking out of, on it. But, you know, before that, when everybody was projecting <laughs> that he was going to go to Oklahoma. And, it, of course, you know. And Bro, it, it looks to me like Oregon got their uh, – Dan Lanning got his advising for this recruiting class directly from Jimbo Fisher. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, dump dump the bag. Is that what it is? Yeah, let's let's dump it's the bag crazy, on it. man. Hey, man, and that's the way of you know everybody. Can, I was just laughing. I just tweeted out a few minutes ago about um, Jimbo Fisher was talking about how terrible it is with the NIL and and uh, <laughs> and transfer portal, and I'm like, dude, the NIL is what is keeping you alive. And you know, I mean, obviously yeah. you don't care about fit very much, but you know, <laughs> they just bought David Hicks. I, I shouldn't say that they they're buying up guys left and right yeah. and they're not yeah. even staying. So, you know, um, there were some more guys that were in the, that are in this class, at least two or three of them that Oklahoma was, was really in, in for them and it didn't work out. So, you know, I think in the end, what I was saying about the whole, I mean, this is a, historic class if you didn't have Peyton Bowen in it um right. it was still going to be number seven um that's where they were they were hanging right around seven again a bunch of top 100 guys and pretty much everybody but a couple in the top 247 which you know you get this idea that you have to be number one in the or or even top five in the in these recruiting classes like every year that's ridiculous yeah, yeah, yeah. you need you need to have probably one um, but you, what you had to do is have this sustained level of good recruiting yeah. and for anybody, for whatever you want to say about Oklahoma six and six season in which the team was pretty much gutted. Um, you know, you lost two five-star quarterbacks, one of which won the Heisman at his next stop. Well, dude, you know? 42 players. Like that's yeah, insane. I mean, yeah. And 13 guys off of the depth chart on the defense, which wasn't a good defense to begin with, wasn't there. Right. And all of a sudden they're supposed to just because Venable shows up, they're supposed to automatically know how to play his defense. It's silly talk. But that being said, for everything that was being said about that, you know, this expectation of getting every player was it's just kind of silly. But Right. What you have to do is have sustained dominance in that. And and that's one thing about Venables and Crew. I mean, well, Todd Bates was recruiter of the year in 2020. Um, they've got Jay Valai, who picked up just, I mean, guy after uh, Macari Vickers is is a, a right because of him. The McCullough brothers are because of him. Um, you've got and and certainly his 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 relationship with Peyton Bowen paid off as well. Um <laughs> 
there's some stud recruiters, not to mention Venables himself, who recruits very right. well. Um, and and yet you had all this complaining going on and all this naysaying about if you're not in the top five right now, you'll never win one. I don't agree. Well, it's 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 maddening, right? And um, right, but right. that's part of. Part I think of you have to do a great job, Cody. I just don't think that you have to be top five every season. Well, it's it's not only that. It's uh, again back to the the, the media side of things. It is mm-hmm. up to people. I think, like both of us, that right. you have to be able to paint the narrative. It's, it's going to be easier for you, to be honest with you, because of OU's understanding and following. That's just a fact. I'm right. I'm fighting an uphill battle. I'm 70 years <laughs> behind the race in 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 giving out O State news. Right? It's a it's a yeah. fact. Even the guys that, that, you know, we thought we could rely on uh, in the media kind of turn on us for the, the crimson and cream dollar bills. The money comes back up again in media. And right. But I firmly believe that if you, you really get into the right realm of doing it for the right reasons, because if you give a crap, I don't care what anybody says, if you right. give a crap, what you're researching, it, it, it means 10 times more, right? When you're... Sure. Put, uh, committing something to memory when you're putting it on paper, it, the application of it does nothing but benefit the university because the last thing you need is a bunch of crap going around that's not true, and, and more so even for us, right? Again, because the, you guys have a much bigger fan base. So for Oklahoma State specifically, it's like you know that eventually you know the information is going to get there, but you got to sift through the waters of all the horse piss before you can make it all make sense. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, we're yeah. talking, um, you know, the, the media side of things. Mm-hmm. Well, if you could real quick, why did you kind of get into to the realm that, that you are in uh, right now, sir? Well, myself, I've, I've been a sports journalist. I was a sports journalist for the better part of two decades. I've covered Roger. college football throughout the Big 12. Um, you know, I've covered football from high school on up. So, um, and, and I just love the game, you know, I love the game. I love, but I'm an Oklahoma yeah. fan. I grew up my, my dad and I, you know, my dad and I, that's, that was our bonding was, was Saturdays watching the Sooners. Right. Um, and we caught some games, you know, my first red river game, I was, I think 11 and, um, you know, unbelievable fun time, you know, um, my first favorite player was Jamel Holloway, you know, then my all time oh, yeah, favorite yeah. player. Yeah. You know, then my all time favorite player was obviously, uh, AD and, um, you know, and then Roy and some of those other guys, I mean, you know, you know how it is. You, you grow up watching yeah, this yeah. thing and, and you have your, ha- your heroes, but yeah, for sure. sports We're- has always been kind of my thing. I love a lot of sports, but, but football and particularly college football is definitely my favorite thing. Um, and so I kind of got, you know, away from it for a little bit, but, um, this last year, I uh, I was approached about doing a Hall of Fame campaign for a former chief from way back, um, but it kind of spurred this whole. I want to get okay. back into this deal, and uh, so I've been really burning the wick at both ends for about six months now. Okay, I'm getting a pretty okay. good following again, and uh, nice, you know man. we're uh, we're having a good time with it. It's just been a lot of fun, but but I tell you. If you pay and if you pay as much attention to it, and, I'm not, and you're right about fans, some of them pay attention to some, and they get this or they hear whatever. Those spaces are are rough, man, on Twitter. Hey, because, you ain't lying. Some of them because you don't wild. have to be, you don't have to be really that knowledgeable to right, get on there right. and throw it out there like you are. Um, well, it's about. You know, I don't care about me. followers or anything like that. You can tell if somebody's real or not. You know what no, I mean? It's, well, that and it's as one of the like the second show I ever jumped on, right? Because I were right. I think we're we're I'm on. This is my you're my fifty first episode. So okay, congrats. Cool. You, you just helped yeah, me well. pass my fifty mark. Yeah. So well, good. So Congratulations to you, man. That's oh, awesome, thanks, brother man. So yeah, we're in it. We're in it to win it, and I flip and love it. But again, I just. I think that it's important that people know what's happening, but to get it from a place that they can trust it, because that's the the biggest difficulty. And I know you, again, you're talking about the spaces. It's because pulling receipts, you don't have to do that uh, online. You don't. Right. Like if you do say whatever you want, you can say whatever you you want and get away with it a lot of times. A hundred percent. Right. And it's not like people are going to fact check you because you can just bounce and say, you never said shit. It just, I hate it too. 
Social media is a fickle mistress. I'll tell you that. Oh, I hate it. If it wasn't, hey, listen, I mean, I've got I've got friends on Twitter and people that I really enjoy. And then I yeah. the rest of it is like, ugh, ugh. Yeah. it just drives you crazy. <laughs> but and the whole thing with I've tried to say the other day, whenever whenever Peyton Bowen picked Oregon, I knew what was coming. And I was like, remember, he doesn't know us an explanation. Leave it alone. If it doesn't work out there, maybe he circles back to you. I didn't know what was going on. Right. Yeah, you know, I wasn't gonna act like I did. I I heard a few things. Well, but and I, then the funny part was hearing OU fans being like, "We don't want him to come back. Stay your ass away." <laughs> right, right. I was like, "What?" And it's that? always the people that say stupid shit like that. Yes. They, they, then they yes. come back with, you know, <laughs> then they then they act like they didn't ever say it. You know right. what I mean? And it's like, dude, dude, shut up, dude. Nobody Somebody needs stole to hear my phone real quick. <laughs> back, guys. Yeah, yeah, man. Okay, so if you're just talking the recruiting side of things, um. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to give you real quick. So, you know, you've, you were right hearing right there, there for quite some time. And I know you made a, a show about Oklahoma state and how Gundy needed to go and stuff. There's a lot of things that you said that I don't disagree with because right. Gundy has underachieved. He's it's, it's crazy, right? To think that he's the reason we're up here, but he's sure. also the reason we can't get up here. Right. And it's a hard thing for O State fans to seem to to swallow because of this. Oh, I know. They, in fact, in I take I took a beating for it from from your guys, and I get it. And well, I and I knew it wasn't going to be a popular. It wasn't going to be a popular opinion. I get that. And 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 that's, if it's coming from a legit place, and that's why I strategically did say like, there's a few things you said that are 100 percent legit, and people need to stop giving so many passes to Gundy. You can't keep saying right. it's good to be good. It's good to be good. It's good to be good. Like. That's what I said. Let me know if the expectation is seven, eight wins every year, then what the hell's the point of having a job? I was watching that episode just earlier um, that you were talking about that. And I agree with you hundred percent. And that's where Crazy. I think where I, the most of the stuff that I got back, some of it was, you know, BS and some of it was some of it. Yeah. I it, What I got a lot of, and there were even some people that agreed with what I had to say. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, um, yeah. But a lot of it had to do with, you know, like we can't get better than what we have here. Um, and I have a hard time believing that because we're paying them almost eight million dollars. Eight million a year. A lot of coaches People in this like country we're paying North Texas money. Exactly. You they, and that's what I'm saying. And on top of that, it's a revolving five year deal. Yeah, the guy hasn't won a national true. championship. In fact, he's only got one conference title that I'm like. And three wins I, against Oklahoma. And it's, yep. so to me, in 18 seasons, if that's the best you've done and you're paying the guy $9 million, I have a hard – I not, I know. I get it. I get it. I get it. From as that an Oklahoma fan, I say continue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> just to give you a hard time. Oh, uh, dude, I, as an OU you. fan, I say I hope he stays forever. Now yeah, – Right, <laughs> uh, right. But if if I'm if I was an o, an OSU fan, and I think that this comes from a lot of the folks, and I think a lot of Oklahoma fans feel the same way about this, is like, this is your own bed that you're make that you've made, yeah, yeah. and now you get yeah, to yeah. lay in it. So you know what is it that we're doing? It, why? It, because to me, I just don't understand it. And then when you hear things like, well, he really doesn't like to to recruit, and his recruiting classes, and then you lose starting quarterback, you lose guys that are on that defense that were important. I know right. that you didn't lose everybody, and I understand that there were some well, guys that, that were important. that the biggest thing that, that didn't make a lot of sense to me is literally 95, 89.9% .9 of the dudes that left were guys that didn't get to play much or they've been too injured to play, right? Like, Spencer's going to hurt. Nobody's, Spencer's nobody's, going to hurt you, I feel like. and then ridiculous enough to say that he's not. Losing Mason Cobb's going to hurt a little bit. But then, I, I, you know, I know you know about Justin Wright, right? Is he as sure. athletic as Mason Cobb? No. Is he as fast as Mason Cobb? No. But he plays angrier and more aggressive, and that's kind of what we need. We've got speed. We've got Kendall. It just Daniels seemed like talent. you needed more of it. You know what yeah. I mean? So if you, you know, it's not good to me. I would have. And it, it here's what here's where my alarm would be in it. Not in who you lost so much, but but kind of, but more along the lines of why you lost them. It seemed like to me, and and a lot of the things yeah, that yeah, came. Yeah. A lot of the things that are out there are what we're talking about is, is that I think guys in the locker room were kind of sick of the nonchalantness after losses or the not 
adjusting during yeah. games. And like, you know, when, it, when yes, you sir. come back after the, after the TCU loss and you go up 24, three after, or 24, seven oh, after the, at the nine minute mark and you don't do anything else for the rest of the game. Yep. yep. And lose. Nope. I yep. mean, yep. oh, well that one wasn't as good as the last few, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Not as fun. <laughs> and <laughs> it's just like, Bro, come on, man. And he said, what was it? it I, I say it's because of the Russian. It was yeah. just the Russian, the Russian discrepancy. Well, I'm like, and the, the crazy part with Gundy is he made a career as an offensive coordinator yeah, taking gambles, being risky, finding ways to kind of counterbalance. And then whether he loved it or not, Dana Holgerson did be able to convince Gundy of something, which was – you don't have a bunch of 300 pound dudes and it's going to take you a long time to get them. So you're going to have to start playing faster. You're going to spread it out more. You're going to recruit more okay. speed. And then sure. Gundy does that for X amount of time. And then this last year, and he's done it before. It was just not only the square peg in the round hole thing, like trying to have Dominic Richardson run his own blocking scheme. Like he's Tatum Bell or Quentin Griffin. All of a sudden it was, I mean, it just, it didn't make sense. It never made sense. And some of that stuff is is frustrating because Gundy's so flipping frack and stubborn that he's right. like, yeah, well, well, well we, and he and he gets his ass. Not only are we not going to change it, but we're not going to talk about it either. What the? Then what are we? Saying? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and that's that's because well, I think about like the Texas game. After that Texas game, you could see what was about to happen with K State because they kissed his butt the entire <laughs> week <laughs> talking about. Oh, this just this wonderful culture that you've cultivated over there in Stillwater, Coach. And it was coming, and I'm sitting there watching the press conferences going, they're gonna get their butt kicked this week and watch. <laughs> I knew it was well, coming. I knew it was coming. He, 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 I didn't he, think it was coming that bad, but it, I knew it was coming. No, I, I agree with you in the sense that I think that there was a split in the locker room after TCU. And I think there should have been, right? Spencer yeah. Sanders, like I, I don't have any ill feelings for Spencer because he gave us four years. He, he, he broke some records, right? He's always going to be remembered. And at the end of the day, he's not leaving because he I'm maxed the best the athlete you've had at quarterback ever. He's leaving you know? because he reached his ceiling with the coaches. It's just that's that that's it. That's what it is. Right. But if you look right. at the recruiting this year, which obviously I want to get back to, it's because. If you look at our class, it's all just mean, nasty dudes. This looks like a Les Miles class, which is the only reason I'm okay with being ranked number 39 or 41 or 40, whatever, right? Because right. even – so, again, you talk about the, the, the gaps that we filled. Losing Spencer Sanders, again, it's going to hurt. But I've said on my show before, it's not about that. If we can fix the damn O-line. Charlie Dickey has not been able to piece in a line together since he got there. It's just not working out. Don't know why. Don't care why. But it's got something has to be fixed. Yeah. Well, we were pretty aggressive, I guess you could say, in filling some needs on the offensive line. And we only lost one dude. So as long as we keep this together, I think it's the talent that's around that's going to, to help the most. Ollie Gordon is a dude. Jaden Nixon is a dude. Our wide receivers core is deeper than it's ever been not more talented but definitely deeper and then you 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 look at the guys that we got there's some of them like you guys have that you expect to play right away right 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 yeah like, sure. there is well there is well you junior. hope so he should come in slide in immediately and be able to help pick up the the loss of jabbar muhammad so jabbar muhammad mason cox spencer sanders that's gonna hurt right there's no way around it but sure. i think i think from a physicality standpoint, this is the, the the most physical class Gundy has ever put together by by a country mile. And even okay. the guys that you know, it's going to take a couple years to develop. It just it is what it is. Even right. those guys have one common theme: they're slamming fate dudes face max in the ground and rubbing it in. This is not this is not a tenacity. You want a defense, seen. then? Well, a defense is important. Definitely. Well, and our whole lineman we got. Like, even then, there's a couple uh, for age, uh, Gage Stanland we stole from Navy, right? Mm-hmm. He's somebody, he's going to take a couple years before he's really ready. But if you watch his sure. film, this dude has no problem getting 15-yard penalties protecting his quarterback. None nice. at all. all and right. it's just like, you go down the film, you guys... You have a crap ton of talent. The talent you have coming into Norman's probably the best it's ever been youth-wise. 
It was, is that Absolutely. fair to say? Uh, I, I think it's it. This is a historic. This is a historic class. And I'm saying period. it could be for in us the as two well, four seven era. Challenge. There has never Just, ever been a nasty. class like this. I love it with at Oklahoma, um, particularly on defense. It, you had two five star defensive players sign. And they've yeah. never had more than one. I mean, they three total, which that's yes. only been equal to one time anyway. But you know, if you if you start looking at it, to have two five stars in the in coming off of a six and six season at that. Yeah, I know. To off get of two five star season guys, that looked looked. I mean, obviously K State and KU for us was just abysmal. Uh, that was our first. Those were our worst losses since two thousand and seven and nineteen ninety four. Right. My guy. Well, and if you look at. Oklahoma, out of the aside from the TCU loss when Dylan Gabriel got hurt early second quarter, they were already getting beat. By the way, so it didn't. I right. mean, I'm not blaming it on Dylan Gabriel, Tracking. but the 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 Texas game, you know, which I don't like talking about, obviously. But it, I mean, they got smoked, but they didn't. They didn't have a quarterback that was serviceable at that point, um, or at least according to Levy, I, that was one of the things that I felt like you find out what you have in Nick Evers right now. Yeah. Um, and there's some reasons behind I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know that I buy all the answers that they had for that. You, it, what was it going to hurt you to find out? You lost 49 nothing. Yeah. So, True. but aside from yeah. those two losses, the other four were one score losses that any number of stupid penalties or, you know, just miscues here and there would have been the difference in the game drop passes uh things like that there was a lot of that um so what was the six win season could have easily been nine um you know it, it could have easily been nine it could have it, i mean you could have possibly gotten 10 out of it if you somehow it, and let's just put it this way when caleb williams was there they could have had five or six wins also but because of him they didn't um you know, because he was Superman and he did the same thing at SC this season. Yes, they very did. easily could have won five or six games if it's not for Caleb Williams. Um, yeah. And the Pac-12 yeah, yeah, yeah. Pac was trash, man. I don't care what anybody says. No, no, trash. You're, you're, Everybody you're, they played outside yeah. of conference was either garbage or they got beat. Bro, you want to speak of spaces? I hate to sidetrack, but I was on a space the other day, bro, and this Utah fan chimed in, right? And at first, right. real cool. Utah's cool. good, and Utah's good. I'll give well, them that. I think I Coach like, Whittingham is the most underrated coach in the country. And it, So it goes um, uh, Kirk Ferentz at Iowa, right? And then Whittingham and Gundy is winning his active coaches at their, at their uh, uh, schools, right? So right, right. he was talking about the differences between Utah and Oklahoma State and their similarities. I was like, okay, yeah, that was cool. And then he started going crazy about how the Big 12 is going to fall apart and the SEC is going to take over and have like 30 teams in it type thing. And, yeah, and he was just – and I was like, dude, the TV they numbers should be, – They should be pushing to go to the Big 12. I revenue, don't know why not. Revenue doesn't support what you're saying. The TV numbers don't support what you're saying. Right. ESPN and Fox don't support what you're saying. Why would you – and he's like, well, because we're in the Pac-12. And I was like, yes, the Pac-12 is a yeah. dead conference trash walk In the water. Dead. <laughs> they're dead, dead meat. The but second those, those two like L.A. schools are gone, crazy. they're screwed. Because here's the other thing is that what I feel like is about to happen now. You've got the Big Ten Commission now it's saying that Cali that, weed, that Cali weed's too good, I guess, man. <laughs> it is good. Uh, <laughs> I would tell you that. I would tell you that what's what I feel like is going on there, and you have you have the commissioner of the Big Ten now saying that he's not looking to expand. I, I think that's trash because right. first yeah. off, how long is UCLA and USC going to be happy? making every trip to the to the east coast midwest and east coast for their for their road games mm -hmm. that's not going to last long mm -hmm. uh they're going to have to get at i would think at minimum <laughs> two more teams out of there which now you become so. the eight pack yep. or and but if I th they get, i think we eat up arizona and colorado eventually i think so too i think so too and i think that i think that Colorado should have never left. I don't know what that was no, about. And, th and they agree, right, for the most part. The fans the fans of Colorado Somewhere want to be back. Yeah. I guess it's some These of the – uppity, uh, the uppity yes. crew of, yeah. the, of the Colorado base. Though, we have weird. ski resorts. Oklahoma has cows. Get the hell out of <laughs> yeah. Here. Yeah, and, like, you know, well, and the thing is, is so many of the, of the folks that graduated from CU at the time when they were great, now yeah. they don't live there. 
they, you know, but they're in these other parts of the country and true, working true, around true. these other Pac-12 folks that act like, you know, that they, they, and they start acting the same way. And you know how alums are, man. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's alums are weird and it's just the way it is. And it, I mean, you know, we're both alums. I get it, but that doesn't right, have to right. be that. Not everybody's that way. And so no, yeah. it is what it, it is, what it is. It's just, but you know, you get this belief in, and the thing is, is like with coach prime, they're a problem that, oh, that yeah. Colorado is a problem. Whether they win the or lose, right will be now, in they're going to win. Class. They're going to win, man. They're going to win. It. He, oh, yeah. he got good coaches. Dion, yeah. Dion, yeah, yeah. Dion doesn't think that doesn't claim to be the best X's and O's guy. Correct. That's not what he's there for. That's not what he's there for. He was smart. Um, yeah, yeah. That being said, so I feel like also the Big 12 is in the same situation, though, because if you look at like UCF and Houston, these are, these are schools with a lot of money. And right. a lot of uh, uh, what doesn't uh, UCF has the lar- largest enrollment in America. Was just fixing to tell you that. Yes, largest enrollment and the largest alumni base in America. That's so there's money Fast. behind that. Fast too. Fast. Yeah. It's. I mean, what has the school been around twenty? It's like UTSA. Yeah, right. They've grown from an NAIA school to they're the real deal now. You know, they've won two Conference USA championships in a row. Now that's Conference wow. USA. But they were NAIA whenever I got into sports writing. They were NAIA school that played in New Mexico school that is still NAIA that That's I covered. Wow. So I didn't know it's, that. yeah, I mean, man, it was I played in I, I played in NAIA ball. <laughs> right. Yeah. And listen, man, it's just it, when I started covering them, it was crazy. I mean, UTSA, I was like, where are these guys from? And then you got UT Arlington, same thing, but they've grown fast. And Coach Trailer yeah, yeah. does a good job there. Um, you know, they, they've got a nice little, they've got a nice, uh, a nice program, but that being said, and that's the whole deal is that, but when you have guys like in Houston, they've kept Houston out of the original big 12 because Texas didn't want to deal with them and their money. Right. And now they're in it. Mm-hmm. Believe me when I, t- and BYU has been kept out of in- important leagues forever. They're right. going to, yes. you think they're not going to be important. Oh. They are. Well, and if Cincinnati would have kept fickle, they'd have been a massive issue. I still think that they could be, you know what I mean? I don't know that they are right now, but I think that it was, it was bad timing for Cincinnati to lose him right now. Correct. I think he's one of the, another one of the best coaches in the country that nobody talks about, Mm -hmm. you know? So, but in, okay. So you were talking about Gundy. What, I mean, you're going to tell me that you couldn't have gotten a guy like fickle if Cincinnati had him, where you can't, you're going to tell me you couldn't get a guy like Gus Malzahn. Come on, man. Well, which is exactly why I say, and I've said in my show, right, that the biggest criticism I take from O State fans is how hard I am on Gundy. But I feel like I, I, I've been watching the same thing, right? I haven't missed a game since 1997, right. damn near. Yeah. yeah and right, so it's like I, I don't understand how everybody can watch this. How many times the the Bedlam record is what it is because. Of the conservative play expectations, calling. every every, every <laughs> bedlam Gundy curls up into a ball and he he, he throws his play card. It's every trash. game that matters, it seems like. Well, not to him. That's my biggest issue with Gundy is his uh, the way he approaches bedlam. He's like, ah, no big deal, another game. Meanwhile, we're all well. It's home. easy to do that when it, I mean, you better take you that. I mean, if you're him, with him every day. If you're him, <laughs> you have to kind of take that tack because you don't win. Les you know, Miles for whatever didn't, reason. Les Miles I know. let I know. let everybody know he was coming to sock people in the nose, win or lose. They didn't. We didn't care if we won. We just wanted to beat the hell out of OU. Jimmy players. Johnson, same way. I mean, these we're talking about. There's been guys there that have went on and been big time coaches elsewhere. Yeah. And when you, I mean, even if it is kind of a stepping stone job, which I think is what a lot of Oklahoma is this what a lot of Oklahoma fans, uh, Oklahoma state fans feel like, is that, is that the feeling of it? I, that you're I, never going to keep a guy. Um, I, if I were to guess honest to God's truth, I would say at least 35, 40% of the fan base does feel that way. Still somehow that it's always going to be I, just I, that stepping stone get. job. Well, they're not but, as you know, blue Okay. Blue. If it's a stepping stone, why did it take Ohio state jumping at seven bags of cash? Right. To get a, a Jim Knowles, it's not like people are, were losing uh, coaches to Tulane and 
and Wake Forest, we're just we're not, right? right Oklahoma right. State, if it's a stepping stone job, people are come to OSU to step up to what now? Much you know, Mich- Michigan, Ohio State, OU, Texas level jobs. Like right, right. No, is, no, no, no. And I get that. And I'm not, I'm not even saying that in a, in a derogatory way. Oh, what I know, I'm telling I know. you is that if you get yeah. these guys on their way up and they're that guy, because like everybody has their stepping stone, right? Right. Correct. Uh, correct. Aside from Venables. I mean, he, his stepping stone was obviously being a coordinator, Yeah. which is, but that's rare. But it think is. about guys like Urban Meyer, right? You know, he started at Utah. And then, of course, Whittingham's been there from, you know, since then. Right. But you think about guys like that. And then, like, even Mario Cristobal, you know, I remember when he was at Memphis and then he gets right. the Virginia Tech job. And then the uh, uh, and then he was, ended up at Oregon. And then now, yeah. of course, he's back at, at, at Miami. But, I mean, Mario, he had to he had to pay his dues. Well, Mark, you know Mark's I mean? dues journey has been pretty cool, too. Same thing. Yeah. And Mark, you know, Mark's doing a good job. And I mean, shoot, they're paying him nine million, eight, nine million dollars now yeah, at Kentucky to not have to win, which, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, there is some level of expectation, but at Kentucky, right. it's not like you're the head basketball coach. Correct. You know, you, right. you know, if, yeah, if you were. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're not the head basketball coach there, so you don't have to deal with that kind of ex- expectation. And I'm thinking about that with Oklahoma State. How long would you deal with a bad basketball coach at OSU? Uh, not Boynton's very long. Got, yeah, Boynton's got one more year. If we don't see anything, it's just it's time. It's time. Well, and it's same right. with John Smith. Well, why is that, that not the same the thing day? with football? Well, why is it not the same way with football? I agree. I, agree. I think, again, it's just um, – People being scared, but scared money don't make money, right? It just it don't right, make right. sense to to lie and wait. But that's why I've even said, right? I give Gundy next season. Okay, if we have another seven eight win season, we as a university, I don't think we're good enough to deal with another seven eight. If we have back to back to back seven win seasons, it would. I don't know how we recover from that. Then we we then we right. become the team well, that that's can't thing do better. Like if you can't. You now that it, Texas and Oklahoma are about to be gone, and you're not going to take the step forward. We have that was the right, that was right. what my video was about. It was like you have an opportunity okay, okay. now to step to the front of the class here. We should. Yeah, no, you're right. From that perspective, uh, I agree. step to the front of the class. Yeah, you know, my, I mean, my only thing was the, the the narrative that and and what made me angry was you you have OSU fans getting all this information from. Oh, you sources about how bad things are in Stillwater. And I was like, wait, what? How does, I don't. Well, yeah. And, and, and that Oklahoma was my thing. Say is anything nice fans, about Oklahoma state. Come on. OSU fans were like, <laughs> things are so bad. And I was like, no, no we've lost three, right, right. three main guys. I don't understand where all this is. No. Kendall Daniels is back. Ollie Gordon's back. Colin Oliver's back. Obviously Garrett Rangel's back. We got every wide receiver that, t- that played any snaps back. We got all of the O line yeah. back. Well, I was surprised know? that they kept. I was surprised that they were able to hold on because the one brother left, and I figured maybe that was signaling the other one leaving too, but apparently not. Uh, and that was the thing. It's like you know, Trace Ford. That was kind again, of a weird deal. Lost, what was that about though? Who Braylon? What was that even about? Yeah, he, why did he? He leave? got he got the sales pitch of him being a Tyree Hill and being a running back at Oklahoma State, and that's I guess why he came here. And when he got here, we were like okay, well, you're not really going to be able to play in front of these guys, so let's move you to wide receiver. And he only got a few snaps, and he only got a few passes, and he dropped half of them. And right, right. so he got benched, and he didn't play again, and he got mad about not playing. And, and obviously, there was no possibility. It is a do-it-now It is a do-it-now do time in this country. But that you it know what? Crazy, that's yeah. the thing about the portal that's – I've said this a bunch lately is like, Hey, you're at your own risk on this transfer portal. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. You realize 40% of the, of the players that entered the portal a year ago are not playing anywhere or they go down. Yeah, correct. Well, and just like Braylon, like Tulsa is a cool school. It's a really cool. I think he will, he will dominate, but right. it's not, but he's going to be looking to get out of there too. If he does yeah, anything, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? If he does anything, you got to be looking to get out of there. Correct. Yeah. Because otherwise, what are you going to do? I mean, nobody's going to know who you are there. 
<laughs> I'm not even bad mouth well, in Tulsa. I'm sorry. No, I don't want to sound like that. I, I, I'm just I, saying, if you're if it's situation like that, I mean, if you were so good, why did you end up at Tulsa? That doesn't make sense. Well, and that's what, you know when what you I mean? go to dom, when you dominate at a Tulsa or a Tulane, you're looking to go to an OU or an OSU. That's just that's just how it I is. Can see that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I hope I hope Tulane smokes freaking SC man. I love it. <laughs> 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 hey, you know what? Poet, poetic justice. Uh, they, they just, wow. they just. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Those Man, dudes just, were a. I, that was an enjoyable. I figured they probably beat Utah the second time. I watched both of those games. I, I figured had Utah. maybe they did, but but I wasn't surprised in the least right. that Utah won because again, I feel like Whittingham is the best so underrated isn't coach in the Utah country. Utah us like it. isn't Utah Oklahoma State just actually with the conference championships? <laughs> they recruit you know what he recruit he gets the guys he gets and i think the difference is is that you know what don't ask me this because i'm not i'm not a fan of gundy i don't believe in him that much so well, to I'm, me I'm i feel like whittingham whittingham is the guy that gets he gets who he gets but he develops them to the point that they're winning conference championships and major right. conferences right and, but if you look at the wins, even Utah, with all Oklahoma State over the last 10, 12 years, I, I agree with you, you on that. But which one of them, ma- even, I mean, regular season wins have and titles. conference wins are oh, I different. Agree. I yeah. agree. I agree. So yeah. at some point, you have to, at some point, you got to win this game. You got to, you know, and you, you, when you smoked Baylor in the regular yeah. season last year, you can't lose the conference championship like that. Don't tell me six inches. It was four interceptions that did it. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. Come on, I mean, just uh, the, the play and just uh, I didn't like the play calling either. I agree with you. You know what I mean. It just to me it was, it was a complete yeah. choke. We were, job. Playing, we were, we my my biggest issue with Gundy is 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 again why I felt like the season went the way it did is because you players get tired of playing for a coach that's just playing not to lose, right? Mm, that Vince one Lombardi, is the last one. Vince Lombardi even his greatest sayings were like, you know, you're right, winning's not everything. It's the only thing. If mm-hmm. you're not winning the ones that matter, then you become just what? Uh, constantly good and that's okay. That's what I don't get. Well, um, and that's what those were the those were the comments that I was getting that I could not believe on mine. And I mean, if you want to say whatever and, and take up for him and say we're win- we've won x amount of games, okay, right. fine. Consistency's great, but you've got to Yeah, at some point it. at some point and and here's and here's the other reason that I what I usually back this up with is saying okay, you are in a time when only really only Oklahoma has been relevant. Texas hasn't had any relevance in twelve years, and even this season, as good as they supposedly were, they went eight and four again. So you've had at, at a time when you could have stepped to the front of the class already yeah. because no, Nebraska yeah. left. And A and M left, and Missouri's gone, and I mean the the league has been dwindling for a while now, and right. you're not somewhere in that six in a row that Oklahoma has. You can't muster one. I dude, that from that perspective, I agree completely, and I hate the fact that there is part of us that are just like, hey guys, we used to only win two games, so let's just be cool with it. I'm like, that we've got to grow past that. It's been nah, man, nah. because again, not with the because not again, with what they have. If we yeah. don't capitalize on this last decades of year of success, we're going to lose it. And again, and and even with the two big brother programs that you, if you want to call it that, leaving, and you having that, you now you have the opportunity to be that big brother program. Correct. And they're not. I don't know. I have. I have a. I just don't trust in in them doing anything different. When you hear the same things week yeah. after week, when they lose. Well, I, and then, you know, for me, you know, man, I feel like I feel like this recruiting class, and, and maybe I'm just, I don't know, man. It, it, it's different. You can tell this class is way different than anything Gundy's ever done before. I'm uh, looking at it. Um, go ahead. And it just, it just, it, it gives me, um, just the aggressiveness. It's that everything that you see that checks out is how ruthless these. So guys you're are. talking about how they play. You're watching. You're talking film. Because, yes, 100%. because aggressiveness by the coaching staff, I wouldn't agree with it. Not one guy in the top 247 players. Oh, yeah. No, I'm saying from grading film. Right. 100% okay. grading film. Okay. So, right. like, uh, now, like Ladarius Webb Jr., he's a stud. 
Yes, he's all American. His dad played nine years for the Ravens, won a Super Bowl. Right. Right. You, right. you know he's gonna he and he's an animal, but he's even underrated. He's only listed as a three star. It just right. Gundy, but he's also Gundy gets he's a little lit, drunk the, on the the three star thing. He does. It's just it, it it's something that well they're easier to get, you well, know. <laughs> but true. But that being said. Well, and I mean, look at it. You've had what one five star guy in the history of of the rating systems, for one? the most part. Yeah, he had three Chetron. this year. Chetron was a five star <laughs> until he decommitted from OU. <laughs> right, right. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. He was a five star, and then he decommitted and committed to us, and got bumped down to a four star. <laughs> so Anthony Goodlow is one of the transfers you got coming in. Is that correct? Yep, and he was a four star from. Tulsa. Well, yeah, it looked like he was leaning UCLA and USC. And I mean, he was. I had Justin Wright on my show after Justin Wright came in. And you mm -hmm. could just kind of tell, right? That, and then we talked, obviously, off air for a while. But it didn't look like we were going to get him. Um, and I don't know what changed. Don't care what changed. He immediately Off the bag. Who cares? You got the money. Right. Do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do and it. Then, yeah. That Well, so Cameron Hurd. Uh, he's a, a three-star by most services, but he's somebody, he had over 3,000 yards rushing as a quarterback. Wow. Like, he has the athleticism that you can't coach, you can't teach, it just is what it is. But, yeah, a lot, that we were one of the few teams like Arkansas and Texas Tech to be able to convince him to play a different position. But that's somebody okay. that, you know, so we have players like that. Uh, well, if he plus, couldn't throw in, I mean, if he's rushing for that much, yeah, sounds like maybe he wasn't. Well, and that's, when you ball. watch the film, I said when you watch the film, all eleven dudes know there's a ninety-seven percent chance every play this dude's going to run the ball, and they mm -hmm. still can't stop it, right? And that's mm -hmm. Texas, what four five A football, so it's not like he's doing it against scrub competition either. No, and he's in Houston, so he's there's some good teams out there. And he's probably playing some 6A football teams out there as well. So, Roger. I mean, you know. And then our quarterback, like just... Zane Flores, he's already 6'3", 195. I like him. I like him. I think he, that he's – I he think was that... top 10, elite 11, all the way into the last two days of the competition. He broke every mm -hmm. uh, Nebraska high school quarterback record. There. He almost broke the record by like 5,000 yards. Wow. Like, yeah, doing that against a scout team is not easy. How right. is he ranked number two out of Nebraska then as far as quarterbacks are concerned? Because that's weird. He's number two overall player. He got Nebraska player of the year. Oh, okay. He's number okay. two overall. Yeah. And the funny part is Matt Rule, he was like very, very vocal about coming. He, he came at floors hard. I honestly thought with everything they were coming at him with, we might lose him. Um, but he just he he fell in love with the cowboy culture. And that's the, the, the only th thing that Gundy has as a saving grace is the dudes do buy in. They give a crap. They want to fight for each other. Like the only but that's what I was asking is like it, when you when what happened throughout the season, like losing the TCU game and you were hearing grumblings about guys in the locker room being pissed yeah, yeah, about it. Sure. But he wasn't pissed enough about it for them. No. Um, and then, you know, throughout the season, they had more stumbling. And then, of course, they cratered it at the end. Yeah. yeah. But that how long are they going to keep buying into that well that's what i'm saying we don't capitalize if you have more seven season, you if right right i, I you keep I winning six and seven games next year if we do not win at least 11 or make it to arlington i right. think we i think i think we got to start making moves yeah i would agree with that but he's earned another that. year he's been a legend for a long time he Listen, is consistent I, give it get, he, he he gets this year he gets it. If it's it me, it if it's yeah, listen, maybe so. I guess so. <laughs> I, it, it just to me, it, it and, and look, this is I mean, Josh's program would do whatever. But and again, my problem is that okay, now the 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 conference is changing. If you're going to change with it, it'd be kind of now would be the time because next year you've got well, OU I mean, and Texas the still there, and then after that you know, you can kind of really step yeah, yeah. forward. I would want new blood in quicker than that, but I understand where they're not just going to fire him. Well, not know, only that, when they, there's seen, a large buyout, you, well, you've seen him evolve. It's been rare, but 2020 with the OAN shirt and the Chuba Hubbard and all that stuff. And, yeah. and then COVID he had to change practices. You know, 
And then you saw a little bit of an evolution from Gundy, right? And it's like, okay, he's not so stubborn that he can't change a little bit. So because he showed us, yeah, but that I he felt can, like he only did that because he was about to lose his job, maybe. the Chuba thing, and all that kind but of stuff. But he's in that position again. Like he can, he is can he though? Hear, he can. Is it hear just that, you, or is it everybody that's saying this? <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I think there's still forty percent of the fan base that holds true that we we can't do any better. And we should just keep being oh, cool, man. Yeah, you got to keep like, talking again, them off the part of my job. That's ridiculous talk. That's silly yeah, talk. I agree. There are I hungry agree. coaches out there, man. Right. Just like he was yeah. a hungry coach when they gave him the job, dude. When you look, what? So I've had like people like Tatum Bell on the show. I'm having uh, Corey Hilliard uh, on on the yeah. show here coming up, right? Some of the some of the guys that played for less, and right. you know that just the, the, some of the the things that Gundy used to do were right. very creative. You know, oh, he yeah. would take chances. Uh, uh, you know, he's a quarterback. He should be. You know, you know, double reverses, diamond formation, fake punt, fake field goal, whatever. Yeah, and then he around 2014, after Tyreek Hill, everything just kind of changed for real. Gundy yeah, stopped. Yeah. He stopped coaching aggressively, and now he's just been relying I on. I was talent. happy about it whenever they played Baker and them with uh, Mason. That was those were oof. fun to watch. I'll that was a great that. game. That was a great you know, game. Well, that sucks. Like, yeah. We just, we had kinda... a gauntlet where we had some of our, probably our best team ever, right? Mm -hmm. With, mm -hmm. with uh, Dylan Stoner and Marcel Aitman and James Washington and obviously Mason Rudolph. And we had some talent in the backfield with Justice Hill, mm -hmm. Jubo Hubbard, Chris Carson. We had this run. They were scary good. <laughs> they were scary good that year. had a damn Baker Mayfield or Jalen Hurts or Kyler freaking Murray. Mm -hmm. Samaj P. Ryan and Nix and Mixon was in that backfield. That was a nasty, nasty football team too. So, you yeah, know? like the, the, the Gundy's just he, – he gets passes occasionally for stuff like that. It's like, okay. Right, no, I get that one. I get that one because you did. You ran into the team that went to the playoff. Yeah. A, a, you know? A few, a few playoff yeah. caliber teams, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. but but that's but, not what you ran into this season. And no, I, mean, I think you know, I think you, you beat that team. You beat that quote year. playoff caliber team last year, right? Which Lincoln wasn't. He mailed it in. You know, he mailed in the season. You know, because they, I mean they they had six one score games a year ago. That right. Tulane was one of them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they it turned KU? into a twelve point win. The KU, KU game was a twelve going. point win, but if it wasn't for him putting his cape on, they lose. Right, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah and it, the same the with K State. The same with the K State game. I mean, seriously, there was there was games there that they West Virginia should have beat them. They they beat them like fifteen to twelve or something, or seventeen fifteen <laughs> is what it was. Stupid Roger. stuff, you know what I mean? And that's yeah, in yeah. Norman. You know <laughs> what I mean? So it very easily could have been that way how it was this season. And a lot of people forget that, but right, that's right. where I feel like, you know, there's what, I, if I had any issue with most of the people at, but most of the fans are smart enough to know that it's, it's time. You had to give him time to get his players in. Number one, the, the defense is sophisticated on a level that speed defense will never be. And it's gotta be big and you've got to have studs. He got them. Okay. If after year three, they're not any better than this, and they should be better next season, by the way. They better right. be, right? And because already there's still people that are not okay with it, and to the point sure. that if they were to lose this bowl game, which I could care less, it's a freaking 15 practice thing is what it was about for me. But if they lose this bowl yeah. game to Florida State, there's going to be people that's going to restart that talk about firing, which is silly. It, but that's the difference in Oklahoma and Oklahoma State right now is they're one they're willing to fire a first year head coach yeah. over six and six, and you've got half of the fans at Oklahoma State they're like, oh no 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 no, we eighteen years <laughs> one one conference championship. Well, he beat Oklahoma three times. Yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, man. We could go. I'm sorry, man. it's a different it's a different world. It's a different world in these two in that these two programs. It so is, and, and like I said, I think I think that there's 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 a fine line in both sets of the equation, right? Mm -hmm. I, I I think that it's ridiculous to just say let's burn. There's a it lot down of ridiculous stuff, yeah, yeah, and and get rid of everything, burn down the whole house. But it's also ridiculous to just be like, yeah, 
let's give him another five or seven years to see what happens. That I can't stand. I can't exactly. Stand. I think that there's a number there that's somewhere in between. Even Texas well, is not I trying think, to fire I, Sark, I even though I was surprised they didn't. They didn't fire want to fire Sark after some of those losses yeah. this season. I yeah. think maybe that has to do with Arch Manning. But even they even gave Tom Herman, he was in his fourth year when they got, and that was probably a little early on him, I felt like. Yeah, I, I agree. Don't think I agree. Good. But I feel like, you know, we we want to not be Texas if you're Oklahoma. You want to not be Texas, right? But they were, but they were ready to one up them and say, "Screw it, two years or one year, get him out." Yep, he's yeah. not going to get it done. <laughs> the guy had a top ten defense for eight out of the last ten seasons. It, Rod, he's had yeah. nine. He's had what was that? I just pulled that up earlier. He's had seven number one ranked defenses in his career. It's impressive. Damn so good. you're going to tell me that this one season that they were bad when they lost all these guys that, yeah, he just forgot about coaching. He just doesn't know how to coach them anymore. Well, I, yeah, I got you. All right, brother, man. Well, yeah, before get... we get that on out of here, I want to ask you one more thing. Give me your, give me uh go ahead. Be bold. Let's pull the seats. Um, I, I will say 32, 28. We take down Wisconsin. Okay. What are okay. you thinking for Florida State? Uh, I think it's going to be something like that. I, well, they may or name they may not stop them. So you got and they have a tough. They have a great quarterback there at Florida State as yes, well. Man. I'm get. I'm. I'm going to say, uh, 45, 45, 38. Okay, I dig it. I dig it. Our right, brother. Oh, you. Oh, you. Of course. Oh, you. Of course. Forty five, well, thirty eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get brutalized if I went any other way. So yeah. You ain't lying, man. Well, hey, man, I, I actually, I greatly appreciate you, you you jumping on here. And it's crazy. It's like I told my son, right? Sometimes whenever you, you, you get into it with somebody, when you can find professional common ground, it equals respect. And yeah. I, I, I definitely respect your, your, your hustle, uh, the time you've been. Thank you. Uh, the time you've been in the game and everything, and I firmly believe. I know I was busting your chops too, man, but I enjoy the show. Oh, so, dude, it's, yeah. it's 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 all. I think it's all for the better, and I I like it because to me this is why the legacy and media stuff uh, could could not necessarily go by the wayside, but I think people are going to eventually wake up to realize, and you don't have to right. go that route. You can get your information from people who truly care twenty four seven, and it, you can be real about it. Right. Absolutely. So you get the right information. So I dig it, brother. I greatly appreciate it. Let the people know how they can find you out there, and we'll let you get on off here, boss man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, on on YouTube, uh, our channel is just the at CFB dash podcast. Uh, that's at CFB dash podcast, and then of course uh, at Birdie Man Dub on YouTube. You can find us there. Um, it's also Hall of Fame College Football Podcast. Uh, on Facebook and Instagram as well. So Too easy. hit us up anytime. Yep. All right, brother, man. Well, hey, man, thank you very much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. If you want to give everybody a, a big go pokes, you could. You may, I won't hold you to it. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother, we'll see man. you on the I'll next one. It. Horns down. I'll do, I will do that. Oh, I'm down. Okay, yes, common ground, baby. All right, brother. Take it easy. Later. All right, y'all. So, you know, like I said, on this show, we're always going to continue to find the best ways to get the right information out to the right people 24-7. Because, again, you don't have to be constantly negative to make a point. Um, you can be const have constructive criticism and accountability without bashing people. And if you know what you're talking about, you shouldn't hide. You shouldn't run away. But if you if you feel like you're not given all the information, then you need to kind of just hone in because there's some of us out here that are trying to do it 24-7 the right way for the right people. So I want to thank uh, Jason and, and for, for jumping on in here and talking a little bit of everything with us and, and chopping it up. Apologize. I feel like this light keeps flashing me, and I, I'll get better lighting eventually too. It's all in the step-up game. I appreciate your time, as always. I love you all. God bless. Go Pokes! I'll see you on the next one. Later.